Chapter 11 The case was going in too many directions at once, Eve decided the best course was the most familiar. She took to the streets, and she took to them alone. She'd left Peabody with a pile of data to check, buzzed Feeney for an update, but she headed out solo. She didn't want to make small talk, didn't want anyone looking too closely. She'd had a bad night and was well aware it showed. The nightmare had been one of the worst so far. It had squeezed her by the throat battered her awake in a sweaty, whimpering mess. Her only relief had been that dawn had been breaking when it had reached its peak, and she'd been alone in bed with Rourke already up and in the shower. If he'd heard her or seen her, she'd never have gotten past him. Perhaps it had been misplaced pride, but she'd used every tactic at her disposal to avoid him, then had left him a quick memo before slipping out of the house. She'd avoided Mavis and Leonardo as well and had only run into Somerset long enough to have been granted one of his freezing looks. She'd turned away from that and had walked out. There was a sick knowledge inside her that she was turning away from a great deal more. Work was the answer, or so she hoped. Work she understood. She pulled up in front of the down and dirty club in the East End and got out of the car. Hey there, white girl. How's it passing, crack? Oh, without much hassle. He grinned at her. A giant of a black man with a face seamed with tattoos. His rocket launcher chest was partially covered with a feathered vest that hung past his knees and added flair to the loincloth of neon pink he sported. Gonna be another hot one this day. Got time to go inside and cool me off with a drink? Might be, for you, sweet but You taking crack's advice and turning in your badge to shake your talent in the down and dirty? Not in this lifetime. He laughed patting his gleaming belly, don't know why it is I got a liking for you, you come on in, wet your whistle, and tell crack what's rocking down, she'd been in worse clubs, and would be eternally grateful she'd been in better, the stale smells from the night hung still, incense, bad perfumes, liquor, smoke from dubious leaves, unwashed bodies, and casual sex. It was too early for even the most dedicated partier. Chairs were overturned onto tables, and she could see where someone had made a careless pass with a mop over the sticky floor. Substances she didn't care to identify had been left behind. Still, the bottles behind the main bar gleamed in the colored lights. On the stage to the right, a dancer draped in pink net practiced a routine to the blare of simulated brass, a jerk of cracks huge head had the domestic droid and the dancer wandering off. What's your pleasure, white girl? Coffee, black. Crack lumbered behind the bar, still grinning. Gotcha. How about a drop or two of my special reserve in that coffee? Eve lifted a shoulder. When in Rome. Sure. She watched him program the coffee then uncoat a cabinet where he took out a bottle fit for a genie, and, leaning on the cloudy bar, smelling the smells, she relaxed a little, she knew why she had a liking for crack, a nighthawk she barely knew but understood, he was part of a world she'd wandered in most of her life, now, what you're doing in this nasty place, honeypot, being a cop, afraid so, she sampled the coffee, sucked in her breath, Jesus, some reserve, only for my favorite people, it skims under the legal limit, he winked, just, what you want crack to do for you, did you know boomer, carter joe anson, small time player, data hound, i know boomer, he's meat now, yeah, that's right, somebody slaughtered him, you ever do business with him, crack, he come in now and then, crack preferred his reserve straight up, he sipped, then smacked his tattooed lips in appreciation. Sometimes he flush, sometimes not. He liked to watch the show and talk the shit. Not much harm in old Boomer. Heard he got his face erased. That's right. Who'd want to do that? He pissed somebody off bad, I'd say. Boomer. He had big ears. If he popped a few, he had a big mouth, too. When did you see him last? Hell, now, hard to remember. Few weeks. Anyway, seems to me he came through one night with a pocket full of credits, bought himself a bottle, a few tabs, and a privacy room. Lucille went with him. No, not Lucille, shit, was Heta. All you white girls look alike, he said with a wink. Did he tell anyone how he came to have full pockets? Might have told Heta, 
He was blissed out enough. Seems she picked up some more tabs for him. He wanted to stay happy. She said something about how old Boomer was going to be an entrepreneur or some horse shit like. We had ourselves a laugh over it, then he come out and got up on stage naked. We had a big laugh. Dude had the most pitiful cock you ever seen. So he was celebrating a deal. That'd be my take. We got busy. I had to crack a few heads toss out some bodies. I remember how I was out on the street, and he come rushing out. I grabbed hold, just fooling. He didn't look happy no more. He looked piss your pants scared. He say anything? Just shook himself loose and took off running. Last time I saw him, as I recollect, who spooked him? Who'd he talk to? Can't tell you that, sweet face. Did you see any of these people here that night? Eve took photos out of her bag, spread them out. Pandora, Jerry, Justin, Redford, and because it was necessary, Mavis and Leonardo. Hey, I know these two. Fancy face models. His wide fingers traced lovingly over Pandora and Jerry. The redhead, she come in now and then, trolling for partners, looking to score. Could be she was here that night, but can't say for certain sure. These others aren't on our guest list, so to speak. Least I can't make a.m. Did you ever see the redhead with Boomer? He wasn't her pick. She liked them big, stupid, and young. Boomer was just stupid. What do you hear about a new blend on the streets? Crack? His big face went blank, closed off. Don't hear nothing. Friendly only went so far, she knew. Silently, Eve took out credits, laid them on the bar. Hearing improved. He studied the credits then looked back at her face. Recognizing the tactic as negotiations, she added to them. The credits slid across the bar and disappeared. Some rumblings recent, maybe, about some new shit. High powered, good long buzz, tough on the credit balance. Heard it called immortality. Nons come passing this way, not yet. Most people around here can't afford designer. They'll have to wait for the knockoff. And that takes a few months more. Did Boomer talk about it? Is that what he was into? Speculation shifted into crack size. He never flapped to me about it. Like I said, I heard some rumblings pass through. It's getting good advance hype, chemi heads are jazzed over it, but I ain't heard anybody had a taste. It's good business, he said with a smile. You got a product, a new one, you get the clientele wired up, hungry. Then when it hits they'll pay, they'll pay big, yeah, good business, she leaned forward, don't try a sample, crack, it's fatal, when he started to blow that off, she put a hand on his beefy arm, I mean literally, it's poison, slow acting poison, if there's anyone you care about who uses, you warn them off this shit, or you won't have them very long, he studied her face, no jive here, white girl, this ain't cop talk, no jive, no cop talk. A regular user's got about five years before it overloads the nervous system and takes him out. That's straight. Crack. And whoever's manufacturing it knows it. Hell of a way to make a profit. Isn't it just? Now, where can I find Heta? Crack blew out a breath, shook his head. Nobody gonna believe it if I tell AM. Anyhow, not the ones already hungry. He looked back at Eve, focused. Heta? Shit. I don't know, ain't seen her in weeks, these girls come and go, work one joint, go on to the next, last name, Moppet, Heather Moppet, rented a room over on 9th last I heard, around 120th, any time you want to, take up where she left off, sugar puss, just let me know, Heta Moppet hadn't paid her rent in 3 weeks, nor had she shown her skinny little ass, this, according to the building super, who also informed Eve that Miss Moppet had 48 hours to come up with back rent or her property was forfeit. Eve listened to his angry yammering as she hoofed it up the stairs in the miserable three-floor walk-up. She had his master code in hand, and was certain he'd already used it as she unlocked Heta's door. It was a single room, narrow bed, dingy window, with a few attempts at homey with the frilly pink curtain and cheap shiny pink pillows. Eve did a quick toss turned up an address log, a credit book with over 3,000 in deposit, some framed photographs, and an expired driver's license that listed Hetter's last address in Jersey. The closet was half full, and from the scarred suitcase on the top shelf, 
Eve judged it to be all Heta had. She ran the A-Link, made a dupe of all the calls on disk, then copied the license. If Heta had gone on a trip, she'd taken no more with her than walking around credits, the clothes on her back, and her club companion's license. Eve wasn't betting on it. She called the morgue from her car A-Link. Run the Jane does, she ordered. White, blonde, 28, about 130 pounds. 5 foot 4, transmitting copy of driver's license hollow. She was barely three blocks away, heading to Cop Central, when the answer came in. Lieutenant, we got a possible match. Need dental, DNA, or prints to verify. Our possible can't be identified by hologram. Because, Eve asked, but she already knew. She doesn't have enough face left. The prince matched. The primary assigned to the Jane Doe handed Hetu over to Eve without a backward glance. In her office, Eve stared down at the three files. Sloppy work, she muttered. Moppet's prints were on file from her companion's license. Carmichael could have ID'd her weeks ago. I'd say Carmichael wasn't much interested in a Jane Doe, Peabody commented. Eve reigned in the anger flicked a glance up at Peabody. Then Carmichael's in the wrong business, isn't she? We've got links here, Peabody. From Heta to Boomer, Boomer to Pandora. What probability did you get when you ran them? Asked if they were killed by the same hand. 96.1. Okay. Eve's stomach jittered with relief. I'm taking all of this to the pa, doing a tap dance. I may be able to talk them into dropping charges on Mavis. At least until we gather more evidence. If they don't a broken bar she looked Peabody dead in the eye. I'm leaking it to Nadine first for broadcast. That's a code violation, and I'm telling you because as long as you're attached to me and this case, you can be held equally responsible. You're risking a possible reprimand if you stay. I can have you reassigned before this goes down. I would consider that action a reprimand, Lieutenant. An undeserved one. Eve said nothing for a moment. Thanks. DD. Peabody winced. Don't call me DD. Fine. Take everything we have over to EDD. And deliver personally to Captain Feeney. I don't want this data transmitted through channels. At least not until I talk to the pa, then try a little solo investigation. She saw the light go on in Peabody's eyes and smiled. She could remember what it was like to be new and have your first shot. Go over to the down and dirty club where Heta worked. Tell Crack, he's the big one. Believe me, you won't miss him. Tell him you're mine, tell him Heta's a corpse. See what you can get out of him out of anybody, who she hung with, what she might have said about Boomer that last night, who else she spent time with, you know the drill, yes, sir, oh, and Peabody, Eve slipped the files into her bag and rose, don't go in uniform, you'll scare the natives, the pa smashed Eve's hopes in ten minutes flat, she continued to argue for another twenty, but it was all spinning wheels. Jonathan Hartley agreed that there was a likely connection in the three homicides. He was an agreeable man. He admired her investigative work, her deductive powers, and her organized presentation of same. He admired any cop who did the job in an exemplary fashion and kept his office's conviction rate high. But he, and the prosecutor's office, were not prepared to drop the charges against Mavis Freestone. The physical evidence was too strong, and the case, at this point, too solid to warrant a backpedal. He would, however, keep his door open. When and if Eve had another suspect, he would be more than willing to listen to her case. Puss head, Eve muttered as she slammed into the blue squirrel. She spotted Nadine immediately, already in a booth and grimacing over the menu. Why the hell does it always have to be here? Dallas, Nadine demanded the minute Eve dropped down across from her. I'm a creature of habit. But the club wasn't the same, she noted, not without Mavis standing on stage screeching out her incomprehensible lyrics in her latest, eye-popping costume. Coffee, black, Eve ordered. I'll have the same. How bad can it be? Just wait for it. Are you still smoking? Nadine glanced around uneasy. This isn't a smoking booth. Like they're going to say something in a joint like this. Give me one, will you? You don't smoke. I'm hoping to develop bad habits. You want the two bucks number? Keeping an eye out, just in case anyone she knew was around. 
Nadine took out two cigarettes. You look like you could use something a little stronger. This'll do. She leaned over so that Nadine could light it, took one puff, hacked. Jesus. Let me try that again. She drew in smoke, felt her head spin, her lungs revolt. Annoyed, she crushed it out. That's disgusting. Why do you do that? It's a developed taste. So's eating dog shit. And speaking of dog shit, Eve slid her coffee from the serving slot and took one brave sip. So, have you been? Good. Better. I've been doing things I didn't used to think I had time for. It's funny how a near-death experience makes you realize not making time is wasting time. I heard Morse has been found competent to stand trial. He's not crazy. He's just a killer. Just a killer. Nadine ran a finger along her throat where a knife had once drawn blood. You don't figure being the latter makes him the former. No. Some people just like killing. Don't dwell on it. Nadine, it doesn't help, I've been trying not to, I took a few weeks, spent some time with my family, that helped, it also reminded me that I love my job, and I'm good at it, even though I folded you didn't fold, Eve interrupted impatiently, you were drugged, you had a knife to your throat, and you were scared, put it behind you, yeah, right, well, she blew out smoke, anything new on your friend, I wasn't really able to tell you how sorry I am that she's in trouble, she's going to be alright, I'd bank on you seeing to that, that's right, Nadine, and you're going to help me, I've got some data for you from an unidentified police source, no, no recorders, write it down, Eve ordered as Nadine reached in her bag, whatever you say, Nadine dug deeper, found a pad and a pen, shoot, we have three separate homicides, and evidence points to one killer, the first, Heather Moppet, part time dancer and licensed club companion, was beaten to death on May 28, at approximately 2 am the majority of blows were delivered to her face and head in such a manner as to obliterate her features, ah, Nadine said and left it at that, her body was discovered, without identification, at 6 the next morning and tagged as a Jane Doe, at the time of her murder, Mavis Freestone was standing on that stage behind you, belting her guts out in front of about 150 witnesses, Nadine's brow shot up, and she smiled, well, well, keep going, lieutenant, so she did, it was the best she could do for the moment, when the broadcast hit, it was doubtful whether anyone in the department would have to guess who the unnamed source was, but they wouldn't be able to prove it, and Eve would, for Mavis, if not for herself, lie without a qualm if and when she was questioned, she put in a few more hours at Cop Central, had the miserable job of contacting Hetta's brother, the only next of kin who could be tracked down, and informing him that his sister was dead, after that cheerful interlude, she went back over every scrap of forensic evidence the sweepers had sucked up at the Moppet murder scene, there was no doubt that she had been killed where she'd been found, the murder had been a clean, probably a quick hit, a shattered elbow had been the only defensive wound, no murder weapon had yet been found, no murder weapon on Boomer either, she mused, a few broken fingers, the added finesse of the broken arm, the shattered kneecaps all prior to death, that, she had to assume, was torture, Boomer had had more than information, he'd had a sample, and the formula, and the killer had wanted both, but Boomer had hung tough there, the killer, for whatever reason, hadn't had the time or wanted to take the risk to go to Boomer's flop and toss it, why had Boomer been dumped in the river, to buy time, she speculated, but the ploy hadn't worked, and the body had been found and ID'd quickly, she and Peabody had been at the flop within hours of the discovery and had bagged and tagged the evidence, so, on to Pandora, she knew too much, wanted too much, proved an unstable business partner, threatened to talk to the wrong people, any of the above, Eve mused and rubbed her hands over her face, that been more age in her death, more of a fight, more of a mess, then again, she was hopped on immortality, she wasn't some foolish club dancer caught in an alley, or a pitiful weasel who knew more than he should, Pandora was a powerful woman, with a sharp mind and an ambitious bent, and, Eve remembered, well developed biceps, three bodies, one killer, and one link between them, and the link was money, she ran all suspects through her computer, 
checking normal credit transactions. The only one who was hurting was Leonardo. He was in debt up to his gold eyeballs, and then some. Then again, Greed had no credit balance. It was the property of the rich as well as the poor. She dug a little deeper, and found that Redford had been busy juggling funds, withdrawals, deposits, more withdrawals. Electronic transfers had been bouncing from coast to coast and to neighboring satellites. Interesting, she thought, and more interesting still when she hit on a transfer from his New York account direct into that of Jerry Fitzgerald in the amount of 125,000. Three months ago, Eve murmured, rechecking the date. That's a lot of money between friends. Computer scan for any and all transfers from this account to any and all accounts under the name of Jerry Fitzgerald or Justin Young in the past 12 months. Scanning. No transfers recorded. Scan for transfers from any and all accounts under the name of Redford to previously requested accounts. Scanning. No transfers recorded. OK. OK. Let's try this. Scan for transfers from any and all accounts under the name of Redford to any and all accounts under the name Pandora. Scanning. Transfers as follows. 10,000 from New York Central account to New York Central account, Pandora, the 2nd of June 1958. 6,000 from New Los Angeles account to New Los Angeles security, Pandora. The 19th of March 1958. 10,000 from New York Central account to New Los Angeles Security, Pandora, the 5th of April 1958. 12,000 from Starlight Station bonded to Starlight Station bonded, Pandora, the 6th of December 1958. No other transfers recorded. Well, the daughter do it. Was she bleeding you? Pal, or was she dealing for you? Eve wished fleetingly for Feeney, then went after the next layer herself. Computer, scan previous year, same data. While the computer worked, she programmed coffee and speculated on scenarios. Two hours later, her eyes were sore, her neck screaming, but she had more than enough to warrant another interview with Redford. She had to settle for his e-service but did have the pleasure of requesting his presence at Cop Central at 10 the following morning. After leaving memos for Peabody and Feeney, she decided to call it a day. It didn't do her mood much good to discover a memo from Rourke on her car a link. You've been out of touch, Lieutenant. I had something come up that requires my presence. I'll be in Chicago by the time you get this, I imagine. I may have to stay over tonight. Unless I can clear this little mess up quickly. You can reach me at the River Palace if you need to, otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow. Don't stay up working half the night. I'll know. With an annoyed flick, she switched off memo mode. What the hell else am I supposed to do? She demanded. I can't sleep when you're not there. She swung through the gates, and saw with some hope that lights were blazing everywhere. He'd cancelled the meeting, fixed the problem missed his transportation. Whatever, she thought, he was home. She walked in the door with a welcoming smile on her face and followed the sound of Mavis's laughter. There were four people having drinks and canapes in the parlor, but none of them was Rourke. Quick observation powers, Lieutenant. Eve thought glumly, then took a moment to scan the room before she was noticed. Mavis was still laughing and dressed in what only she would consider at home wear. Her red skin suit was studded with silver stars and covered with a sheer emerald sweep shirt left loose and open. She teetered on six inch ice pick heels as she cuddled Leonardo. He had one arm wrapped around her, and the other hand was fisted around a glass filled with something clear and fizzy. A woman munched on canapes eating them with a speed and precision to rival a factory droid stamping out computer chips. Her hair was in short corkscrew curls, with each twist a different jewel tone. Her left earlobe was encased in silver hoops that draped a twisted chain around and under her pointed chin to her other ear where it was affixed with a single thumb-sized stud. There was a tattoo of a rosebud along the side of her thin, pointed nose, over electric blue eyes. Her brows were sharp versus of royal purple, which matched, Eve saw in amazement, the micro-size suspended playsuit that ended in cuffs just south of her crotch. The suspenders were strategically placed over bare breasts to cover the nipples. The breasts were the size of farm-grown cantaloupes. Beside her, 
a man with what appeared to be a map tattooed on his bald pate watched the action through rose-tinted glasses and guzzled what Eve deduced to be some of Rourke's vintage. White, his party clothes consisted of baggy shorts that hung to bony knees and a chest plate of patriotic red, white, and blue, she considered, seriously, sneaking upstairs unobserved and locking herself in her office. Your guests, Somerset said in dismissive tones from behind her, have been waiting for you. Look, pal, they're not my aid Alice. Mavis squealed it and leapt dangerously across the room in her fashionable stilts. She caught Eve in a tipsy bear hug that nearly felled them both. You're so late. Rourke had to go somewhere, and he said it was all right if Biff and Trina came by. They've been dying to meet you. Leonardo will fix you a drink. Oh, Somerset. The goodies are just mag. You're so sweet. I'm delighted you're enjoying them. He beamed at her. There was no other description for the bright, Mooney looked that shot out of his stony face before he faded back into the hall. Come on, Dallas, join the party. Mavis, I've really got a lot of work eh but Eve was already being dragged into the parlor. Can I get you a drink, Dallas? Leonardo offered her a sad, puppy dog smile. Eve crumbled. Sure, fine. A glass of wine? Absolutely extraordinary wine. I'm Biff. The man with the map on his head offered a slim delicate hand. It's an honor to meet Mavis's champion, Lieutenant Dallas. You're absolutely right, Leonardo, he continued with his eyes intense behind the rosy lenses. The bronze silk is perfect for her. Biff is a fabric expert, Mavis explained in a voice that continued to bubble and froth. He's worked with Leonardo for just ever. They've been plotting your trousseau. My A and this is Trina. She's going to do your hair. She is. Eve felt the blood drain out of her head and into her feet. Oh well. I don't a broken bar even women with little vanity can panic when faced with a stylist boasting rainbow curls. I don't really think A gratis. Trina announced in a tone that was the vocal equivalent of rusty iron. When you clear Mavis, I'm giving you free hair consultations and styling for the rest of your life. She grabbed a handful of Eve's hair and squeezed. Good texture. Good weight. Bad cut. Here's your wine, Dallas. Thanks. She needed it. Listen, it's nice to meet you, but I've got some work I have to get to. Oh but you can't. Mavis latched onto Eve's arm like a leech. Everyone's here to start doing you. Now the blood flowed out of her toes. Doing what to me? We're all set up upstairs, too. Leonardo's workspace, Trina's, Biff's. All the other worker bees will be buzzing around by tomorrow. Bees? Eve managed buzzing for the show. Cold sober, and less likely to assume welcome. Leonardo patted Mavis's arm to try to restrain her enthusiasm. Little dove, Dallas might not want the house full of people at this point. I mean a broken bar he dodged around the investigation. With the wedding so close. But it's the only way we can be together and finish the designs for the show. The plea naked in her eyes, Mavis turned back to Eve. You don't mind, do you? We won't be in the way. Leonardo just has so much to do. Some of the designs have to be altered now because he broken bar because Jerry Fitzgerald is going to be the headliner. Different coloring, Biff put in. Different body type. From Pandora, he finished, saying the name they had been avoiding. Yeah? Mavis's smile went bright and fixed. So it's a lot of extra work. Anne Rourke said it was all right. The house is so big and everything. You won't even know they're all here. People, Eve thought, scurrying in and out. Security nightmares. Don't worry about it, she said. She would. I told you it would be all right, Mavis said, planting a kiss on Leonardo's chin. And I promised Rourke I wouldn't let you bury yourself tonight, Dallas. You're going to sit back and be pampered. We're getting pizza. Oh goody. Mavis say everything's working out. Mavis went on, almost desperately, her fingers tightening on Eve's arm. On channel 75 they were talking about this new lead, and these other murders, a drug connection. I didn't even know the other people who got whacked. I didn't even know them, Dallas. So it's going to come out that it was somebody else. And it's all going to be over. It's going to take a little time yet, Mavis. Eve stopped, felt her heart drop at the flickers of panic in Mavis's eyes, worked up a smile. Yeah, 
it's all going to be over, pizza, huh, I could use some, great, mag, I'm going to find Somerset and tell him we're ready for it, take Dallas up and show her, okay, she darted out, it really lifted her, Leonardo said quietly, that news report, she needed a lift, the blue squirrel let her go, let her go, bastards, Trina muttered around a canopy, management decided it wasn't in their best interest to have an accused murderer headlining, it shook her bad, I had the idea to take her mind off it this way, I'm sorry, I should have cleared it with you first, no, it's fine, Eve took another sip of wine and braced herself, let's go do me then, 